Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another tier list using Tier Maker, uh, this time covering the green skin unit roster. Been getting some great feedback from you guys on these uh, tier lists, getting, you know, a couple of things wrong here and there, but you guys are providing some corrections, so that's that's great. I'm actually learning stuff as well uh, from these, so I'm more than happy to keep doing them. Alright, so we're doing the green skin here. Now, we made a few changes to how we're doing this, just, just some minor stuff. Um... Some people were having a problem with the red being at the top and the green being down the bottom. That's just the default with Tier Maker, but we've switched it around. Green is up the top now, uh, especially for the green skins. I think that makes sense that the that trash shouldn't be the, the green um, and the red is down down the bottom. And um, in terms of organizing this, it's going to be melee infantry first, uh, missile infantry, then melee cav, then missile cav then monsters, then artillery, and this is based off uh, legendary difficulty campaign, very hard battle difficulty, no mods, no multiplayer, just based on, you know, my campaign experiences with it. Now, you'll notice that in this one here, I didn't put Doomstack up the top. That's because I don't believe that the green skins are optimally played using Doomstacks. I don't think that you should try to make the biggest, strongest army possible and and try to just dominate with like this one super strong army. I think that the green skins actually benefit from using uh, crap stacks, which is you build the cheapest, most cost effective units you can. And if you get wiped out, whatever, you just replace it really quickly. Because the green skins can recruit really, really quickly. And they're just about aggressive playstyle and just want to fight as many battles as possible to get lots of loot. Um, so they benefit less from Doomstacking than other races. So I'm not going to put a Doomstack category if I don't believe that that's actually optimal. But of course, if you like to Doomstack, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. But that's just from my particular playstyle. I used to Doomstack with the green skins, just never found it effective. And then I crap stacked with them and found it way more effective. Anyway, let's move on to the list now. So, uh, melee infantry first. Let's start with the most basic unit, the Goblin Spear Unit. Just goblins, essentially. This unit here, I would say, is C tier. It largely just comes down to convenience and the fact that it's got a silver shield. So, being able to block most missile fire coming at it and basically just be a soaker for enemy ammunition, um, it's not going to deliver much damage to the enemy. They've got, like, no melee stats whatsoever. They're not going to hold against enemy melee infantry. Their primary job is basically to act as... Um, target practice for the enemy units and the thing is their lives are worth less than the enemy ammunition in most cases so for example if you're having a, a enemy unit of um of cannons shoot at goblins they'll actually lose more balance of power shooting at your goblins even though you're taking casualties and just sitting there because this unit is just worth so little to the game so it's an okay unit i wouldn't rely on it too heavily though then we move on to the uh just the orc boy. Um, some of the names of the orcs is really jarring to say, so just bear with me here. <laughs> I don't speak dumbass green skin. Alright, so orc boys. I would say this is actually a trash unit. Now, I've heard before that, oh, maybe I'll be a little more lenient. I'm going to put it Mm, yeah, I'll put it at C tier. Because it is only a tier 1 unit, and I've heard that this is really good on like normal battle difficulty but the problem is when you play on very hard battle difficulty you do have to go essentially fight against the grain and that even if you're fighting units at lower tier they're gonna be a match for your orc boys and in any battle on campaign it's all about your unit being able to deliver its value and when the enemy gets free cheats because the, the, their cheats aren't taken into consideration with the bounce power that's just done behind the scenes that's one of the things that makes it so frustrating you on very hard battle difficulty you have to be more efficient than the enemy and these this unit here um, will only ever trade like evenly on normal battle difficulty usually uh, so getting it to trade above its pay grade is very difficult to do because it's not a particularly fast unit you basically need to rely on it constantly going in and attacking like really squishy units like archers and stuff like that and those are generally speaking the units that the ai don't protect very well anyway and since you're usually outnumbered when you're outnumbered it's really difficult to flank so it's just not a really reliable unit i'm not saying don't get them i'm saying be cautious of spamming them okay then the uh the, uh, the Biggin unit, I'm actually going to classify this one as trash. Um, on very hard battle difficulty, 
This one being a tier 3 unit, I just don't feel like it performs at a tier 3 level. It's sort of like one of the only anti-large units that the Greenskins have as an infantry unit. But I feel like as an anti-large unit, this unit really quite sucks. It's not primarily anti-infantry. It's not particularly fast. Um, sorry, it's not primarily armor-piercing. Um, it is primarily anti-large. They used to take two turns to recruit, but now they only take one, which is good. That's definitely a benefit. But I just find that whenever I use this unit, it just performs worse than other tier 3 units that you can get for a cheaper price point. For its cost, I just don't think it's a good unit. So my recommendation with Biggins is just skip them entirely and get other units that, you know, we'll go through as we as we go through this. Alright, then we've got the, uh, the Goblin Nasty Skulker. This unit here is a fairly squishy... Armor piercing, high damage unit. It's got decent melee attack. Um, it stalks and it's got smoke bomb. This unit here, surprisingly, is S tier. Not because of its base stats, but because of how much you can boost it and what you can do with them. This is a tactical unit, and this is how you fix melee infantry. Because you don't rely purely on stat versus stat engagement, and you you, you can use the stalk to get engagements that benefit you. So using stalk, you hide into an ambush situation, lure a small portion of the enemy army towards you, and then the nasty skulkers get in there, kill them, run enemy units down with, um, with the smoke bombs, because they can't get away so quickly, and then disperse. And then you just rinse and repeat. And also, you can boost them by an absolute ton in the, in the um, tech tree. The green skin tech tree if we have a, just a quick look at it, is absolutely filled with like goblin bonuses, like melee attack for goblin units, melee attack for goblin units, weapon damage for goblin units, just, just tons and stuff for goblins. There's a few things in there for um, orcs, but there's way more stuff for goblins than there is for orcs. And this was introduced in the Warden and the Paunch update, which really made goblins way more viable than orcs. And because um, nasty skulkers are faster, they stalk and they have smoke bomb, makes them an S tier unit. Now, like I said before, I crap stack with... Um, with the green skins, in that I build relatively cheap armies that I don't care if it gets wiped out. This is not a doomstack unit. This isn't going to be able to just defeat anything. But for its price point, you can usually globally recruit them in like one turn or really, really quickly. Uh, they're really cheap. You can get a lot of value out of them. I find that that I can win a lot of battles with just melee infantry, just the just Nazi skulkers, even if I'm the one outpowered. I don't have to rely on on overwhelming numbers as long as I use tactics. So really good unit, uh, highly recommended. I've gotten some really great results out of it. R better results than actually doom stacking with the green skin. So, but you, you can't just be using them like uh, as if they were orc boys and just charging at the start. If that's your way of doing things, it's not going to work for you. You've got to use them tactically and use them as ambushes within the battle. Uh, you have to do that. If you don't do that, you're going to have trouble with them. And of course, there's going to be units that they really struggle with, like single entities and stuff. But you just avoid them. Go for the units you can kill and just hope that the army losses gets triggered before you have to deal with the other ones that's the great thing about stalk you dictate the way the battle goes all right so moving on to another melee infantry unit let's talk about black orcs now so i think black orcs are okay <laughs> i'm gonna put it at b tier because um for their price point they're a very expensive unit um they are very slow but these guys are some of the biggest heavy hitters for a melee infantry unit in the game. Now, this is a, a rare exception where a melee infantry unit, even on very hard battle difficulty, can kind of deliver its value. They're usually gonna get beat up, uh, cause they're, like if they go up against Empire Greatswords, for example, when you're playing on very hard battle difficulty, you're probably gonna take some damage. And of course, if it was vice versa, you, the Black Orcs would take no damage. Um, but under your hands, this unit here can be very good. I would just say, do this with caution, it's not the highest performer in their roster by far, but they are a easy to use, reliable unit that can take on most units in the game in melee and trade okay at it because they do have a good amount of damage behind them and they don't break too easily and you can boost them a fair bit with heroes. So an okay unit, not, not fantastic. Okay, now let's move on to, let's do some Savage Orcs. All right, so regular Savage Orcs here. Um, I'm gonna put, the regular Savage Orcs at B tier as well. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's like a tier one unit. They're really cheap. They've got physical resistance. In the early game, this is a really good unit to use. Now, 
most green skins aren't going to have access to Savage Orcs at the very start. It's mainly just Wurzag. Wurzag, of course, able to get great use out of uh, Savage Orcs, and even more so out of um, uh, Savage Orc Biggins. But yeah, I, I reckon this one here is a B-tier unit. It's just a solid infantry unit. In fact, I would actually say this is actually the, the best uh, tier 1 melee infantry unit in the game uh, just because of its physical resistance because most of the time at tier 1 you're not going to be going up against magical weapons okay and then we've got the savage orc uh, biggin now I think that this one here is actually less uh, cost effective than the uh, the savage orc so if we go over here and have a quick look at it we got to go to a region firstly where we can get them all right, looking at the Savage Orc, you've got this one here at tier one, right? Really good unit for tier one. But by the time you get Biggins, Biggins are a tier three unit. And by that point, you're looking at more armor-piercing opponents. Speed 37, as opposed, that's also 37. Um, and you get Frenzy as well with them. And they're almost twice the price. You lose a couple of entities, you gain a bit of health. Um, I just think that one of the things that really slows them down is the fact that they take two turns to recruit. As the greenskins, you're usually going to want to replace your casualties pretty often because a lot of your units do rely very heavily on melee, so you just need to keep recruiting new troops. And so units that take two turns to recruit just slow you down considerably. I'm not saying don't get them. I'm saying that, that they're not as cost-effective as regular uh, Savage Orcs. That's all that uh, that comes down to there. Okay, so more melee infantry. Let's see. Okay, we got um, Goblins over here. Goblin Fanatics. Alright, now the unit card for Goblin Fanatics um, Oh, sorry, Night Goblins and Night Goblin Fanatics is exactly the same. So, I'm gonna say the Night Goblin unit is actually a B, B tier unit but the Fanatic is an S tier unit because this, even though it's a tier 4 unit, so you get it fairly late the thing that makes this one so good is the same sort of thing that makes the uh, Nasty Skulker so good. Um, they stalk. This one here does as well, but the main edge that this one has is the spinning loons. So going over and having a look at that. So uh, where are they? We got the regular Night Goblins here. Weapon strength of 27, poison damage, very useful. No physical resistance, um, although Grom can give them physical resistance. Right, 100 cost, not not super expensive, that's pretty good price point. Of course on Legendary Difficulty you're going to pay more than that, because that's the base cost. Uh, and the Fanatics, for an extra 25 gold, you get the Spinning Loons. Now the Spinning Loons is able to take out units that are vastly superior to them. And this is where this unit really shines, because this ability here can pretty much delete a unit of hammerers. Basically what you want to do with Night Goblin Fanatics is get the enemy infantry or whatever. Uh, you, not, it's not going to work on single entities. But yeah, have the enemy infantry, get them as tight as possible, and then you can sideswipe them with this ability, and it just absolutely kills hundreds of them. Whenever I play Vampire Celts and I'm playing Scaly Spam, one of the most terrifying units that I go up against is actually Night Goblin Fanatics because they destroy my blobs and it's actually very easy to get the AI into a blob situation so the uh, the spinning loons for that extra 25 base gold is way more valuable than just having a stalking unit um, yeah and you know you've got the nasty skulker at tier 2 so that's, that's another reason why this one's at S tier I mean you just get it so early it's just such a good unit um, okay so that's the Fanatic one, and that's just... Yeah, that's the Fanatics, and that's just the regular one. So that one being a B-tier. Very good unit, very very cheap. Um, but obviously, the lack of armor piercing is a problem for that, which is made up for with this one here, because the spinning loons are armor piercing. Okay, I think that's all the melee infantry. If I haven't missed anything, let me just double check. Uh, yep, that's all the melee infantry. All right, now we move on to archer units. So first up is the regular goblin archer unit. So this one here is not requiring a barracks. I'd put it at B tier um, because it's it's really cost effective. That's what it comes down to. More cost effective than this unit because it can actually dish out damage. Um, but I wouldn't rely on it for very long. Don't use this to try to snipe enemy lords because they're insanely inaccurate. But because they've got so many entities, even though each individual arrow doesn't do that much damage, because there's so many of them shooting, 
just by sheer numbers and the cheapness of this unit, if you're using two armies of cheap crap, uh, you can overwhelm an army that might be tier 2 and armoured that can't catch them, because they're also relatively quick. Gobl that's one of the big advantages of goblins, is being faster than most of the other units that are chasing after it, such as men, elves, and especially dwarfs. You want to be faster than dwarfs, which you definitely are. Like, green, uh, like regular orcs are faster, but goblins are faster still. Okay. Then we've got Orc Arrow Boys here. Now, I actually really hate this unit. I think it's terrible uh, for its price point. They are about 50% more expensive than a um, than a Goblin Archer unit. They are technically a better Archer unit. Um, they've got 90 entities on Ultra Unit scale. It's going to scale differently depending on what scale you're, you're playing on. 90 units compared to 120. So they've got you know 25% extra models. Their damage is more armor piercing. They've actually got one of the most the, the most armor piercing damage units, apart from like Dark Elf units, at like a, a low tier archer unit. Um, but I think one of the big problems with uh, Orc Arrow Boys is because they've got reasonably good melee stats, they're rated quite highly in balance of power. But they're kind of terrible archers and they're terrible in melee so they're not really good at anything and it's kind of better if you're gonna have an archer unit to have an archer unit that's really good at being an archer unit and terrible in melee uh, at least in the early stages because they'll be ranked lower in the balance of power meaning they can dish out above their weight so the problem with the orc arrow boy is because they weigh higher it's more it's more difficult for them to punch above their weight whereas goblin archers punch above their weight a lot easier and um that then leads us over to the uh the uh the night goblin archers which is the same problem over here as well where their unit card is exactly the same between the regular night goblin archers and the fanatics now this uh, fanatic unit is not going to end up in s tier because even though it's similar sort of situation to the regular Night Goblins, the reason why this one's not an S tier unit is because the Spinning Loon is, while it is useful, because it no longer can just charge over time, you actually need to be in melee to, to actually use it. It needs to be in melee for 45 seconds. So I would say that the Fnatic unit is actually an A tier unit. So if I just come over here... So did I say A tier? I meant B tier. B tier. So the Fnatic being a um, a B tier unit uh, because the spinning loon they need to be in melee for 45 seconds and they can't use it if their health drops below 25%. Those are basically unacceptable conditions for this unit to even use it because it's just not going to last in melee. It just it doesn't fit them anymore. Uh, it used to be a lot better. Like I probably would have put this at A tier or maybe even S tier um, if. That it didn't need to be in melee. That's just an unacceptable condition for it to, to use that ability. You're, you're going to be able to use that once at best. Whereas this one over here, uh, the Night Goblin Fanatics, you, you might be able to use that two or three times if you get, give it support, because it does have higher melee stats, and it is its primary job. Uh, and if, if you use it to run down broken units, you can use that to recharge it, so that can work for it. But yeah, this one here shouldn't be used for that. So that's for the Fanatic one. As for the regular one, Okay, I'm actually going to put the regular Night Goblins, Archers, above the Fnatic. So, just to, <laughs> I know it's a little bit difficult to see it because the unit cards are the same. That's the Fnatic, that's the regular. That's the regular, that's the Fnatic. That's because um, this one here, the, the Archer unit being Tier 3, it is primarily an Archer unit, right? This is an Archer unit. It's more expensive by, you know, a fair bit. It's not worth the extra, what's that, like 30 extra gold to get the spinning loons on that unit because their archer ability is exactly the same. So if you're going to get uh, greenskin archers, the, in my opinion, the, you're best off getting the night goblin archers. This is their best archer unit, in my opinion. But you get it at tier 3, which can sometimes be a bit late uh, because the... The Nasty Skulkers, they're at tier 2. You've already you've already got your armies full of Nasty Skulkers if you do it that way. This is all can be very confusing to get your head around where higher tier units end up lower uh, in ranking than than, than lower tier units. It's just, it's just all over the place. The Greenskins are a backwards race. Okay, and then for an Archer unit, we've got the uh, the Savage Orc uh, Arrow Boys. So they're definitely a cut above the regular Arrow Boys. Uh, because they've got physical resistance and they're just they're going to be a little bit better at dishing out damage and uh, not dishing out damage same same um, 
um, archery stats. Actually, let me just confirm that. I'm going to put it at C tier, because uh, I don't think it's an amazing unit. But if we just check here, it's tier 2, and this one here is also tier 2. Uh, this one's a little bit more expensive, but it does have the physical resistance and, and um, frenzy. So this one here, I would say, is a lot better in melee than the, the regular Arrow Boys. But in terms of their missile stats, I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, 21 missile strength, 21 missile strength, 22 ammunition, same range. Yeah, so their archer ability is exactly the same, but this one here is just better in melee, uh, which you might end up needing. And um, yeah, for that amount of price point, it's not not that bad. You know, if you're going to go Savage Orcs, um, it's not too bad. And you can boost Savage Orcs a fair bit more, especially with Wurzag. Alright, so that's all the infantry. Now let's move on to cavalry, unless I forgot something. No, it looks like I got it all. Okay, so let's move on to melee cavalry. So starting off with Goblin Wolf Riders, this is trash. This suffers from the very hard battle difficulty more than pretty much any unit in this roster because it's got very low combat stats. So even though it's really fast and you get into melee with like a relatively weak unit, such as like an archer unit or even worse, like a quarreler unit, it can't beat a quarreler. And if it can't beat a dwarf archer unit, it has no value to you apart from running any enemy units down after they've broken. Now the problem is on very hard battle difficulty is that the enemy are most likely gonna fight to the death until the army losses comes into play. So in order to get your value out of this unit, you literally can't use it until the battle is over. I would only get this unit in an absolute emergency. There's way better units to use. It's just it's just so difficult to get them to do anything. Cycle charging doesn't work. They just can't dish out any damage. All right, if you're going to get a low tier uh, cavalry unit, my recommendation is um, the uh, the Goblin Spider Riders instead. I'm gonna put it at C tier. Still not a great unit, but at least this one here does poison. So at least that's something, you can reduce the damage. So having this one flanking, say a Dwarf Warrior that's attacking, that's, that, your, um, that your Orc Boy is fighting, having this one rear charge it and lower the amount of damage can help keep your Orc Boys in the fight a little bit longer. That's about the only advantage that one has. It suffers from the same problem as, as the uh, Wolf Rider because it just doesn't do enough damage. It can't even beat basic units in melee. So you're just constantly running away. Just not a really good uh, melee unit at all. Alright, so let's talk now about Boar Boys. Okay, there's four different Boar Boys, Savage and Normal. Alright, the regular Orc Boar Boys, they recently got a buff in terms of their speed. They used to only be 60 speed, which was rubbish. Now they're 70 speed, which is better. Still not super fast. And as I've said before, any cavalry unit under 75 speed, I probably wouldn't get. Now, the these ones here are armor piercing, so I'm going to put it at... I really don't want to put it at C tier. I want to put it at, at trash because if we have a look at their stats, it's a tier 3 unit that has 22 melee attack and 22 melee defense. Its weapon strength is 30 and most of its armor piercing. That's great and everything, but the problem is it's just going to land a hit so. F just. just just never going to land a hit. If anything's got any decent melee defense, which again, you're going up against dwarfs. Um, they're just going to be blocking it most of the time. You just be constantly having to cycle charge and just try to get that charge bonus, which isn't really that high. So just not really a particularly good cavalry unit, in my opinion. Don't really like them at all. They just suffer from the from very hard battle difficulty. Greenskins generally don't have good cavalry. Uh, then you've got the uh, the regular, uh, no, not regular. They've got the biggins, uh, the regular orc boar boy biggins. Um, you could put it C tier because at least they're at. At least they've got um, uh, sorry, anti-large. That is more valuable than anti-infantry because you want to be taking out enemy cavalry. So let's just say you're going up against the Empire or Bretonia. Uh, it's not too bad to have some anti-large. Of course, if you're going up against Bretonia, they've got Knights of the Realm, which are anti-large. You'll probably end up beating your units. So I'm going to put it at C tier and just be... It is, it's also tier 4. For a tier 4 unit, I really feel like it doesn't perform very well. Uh, I'm going to put it under trash. Like, I, I see these two units here get wrecked constantly. You can give them some scrap upgrades to make them fairly decent. Uh, but I think you've just got better units to use from. Like, at tier 4, you've had this for a long time. You've had a lot of these units, which just perform so much better. So, I would just avoid these units entirely. If you're going to go cavalry, my advice, Savage Orcs are a bit better. So, um, if we have a look at the Savage Orcs... Right, in terms of their cavalry, both of their cavalry unit is tier 3. So the Savage Orc Boy Biggin, um, it largely just comes down to availability. Like if you don't have 
the Western Badlands or don't have a place where you can get Savage Orcs, and this one's just not available to you. Um, but with most green skins, you should be able to get over here fairly quickly and confederate Wurzag, uh, which is highly recommended because he's the best green skin legendary lord. And this one here being tier 4 compared to tier 3, that's um, it's just significantly better. It's got better melee attack, has lower melee defense. Yeah, low melee defense, but honestly, you're using this one here as a heavy hitter. And they do have physical resistance, so that's physical resistance compensates a little bit for it. So, I would recommend, if you're going to do this, I put this one here as trash, but the big one as... Uh, oh, yeah, I'd put it at C tier, yeah. So, sort of like this. Early game, if you, if you absolutely want to use cavalry, use the Goblin Riders. If you in the late campaign, uh, use Savage Orc... Uh, Boy, boy biggins if you absolutely like need to do it that's what my recommendation would be all right now we'll move on to squig units now this one here is considered a um, monster unit in terms of the game but it has the exact same role as the squig hoppers so if we have a look at this um the biggest downside to this is that it's got a separate build tree like having loads of different barracks is actually a big weakness to any race because you've got limited build slots right and you're going to want to build like all your best buildings and this is definitely not one of the best buildings um, but if you really want squigs um, the, the difference between squig herds and night goblin squig hoppers this one here's got 60 entities this one here's got 40 uh, this is slightly more expensive bonus versus infantry this one here's bonus versus infantry as well they do actually have uh, more damage but when you take into consideration that they're got fewer entities I think that the night goblin squig hoppers actually do more damage especially considering Oh no, they got slightly higher melee attack. They've also got this ability here. So, yeah, they get a bit more leadership when there's enemy units in, in range, okay? Uh, but I think one of the big things that gives them the advantage is the speed. 82 speed compared to um, 30, uh, sorry, 50, 58 speed. That's a big difference, although these ones here have very low armor. I don't think that really matters that much, especially when you're using this guy. If you're going to use anything to, like, hit hard... I would actually say the Night Goblin Squig Hoppers are quite good. Um, but you're going to have to constantly replace them because they will die. So, I would say this. Because this one here also rampages, I'd say that's trash. This one here, I'd actually put it under A tier. These are really good units if your micro is good enough. Uh, you can win against armored infantry quite easily. But yeah, you just got to constantly cycle charge in and out. Make sure you really make use of that charge bonus. But yeah, they eat up um, enemy armored infantry quite quite well um but they're uh, yeah, actually, i'm wondering if i should actually put it b tier yeah i'm gonna put it at b tier just because uh, there's a limit to how much you can push them. i know you can boost them a fair bit as well and only like tier three uh, i'm gonna leave it at a tier leave it at a tier Th these ones here i've gotten some good results out of them they can do a good job and it's quite easy to boost them with other goblin lords so yeah i think they belong at a tier and then we've got chariot units okay so the um orc boar chariot unit uh, this one's actually pretty good. Um, it's tier 4, I believe. Let me just confirm that. Yeah, tier 4. They're cheaper than the Orc Boar Boy Biggins. So this is like anti-infantry. And one of the great things about chariot units is that as long as they don't like actually die in combat, you could lose like almost all of your health because, because each entity has so much health, they don't instantly die as soon as they hit one quarter health. Um, when the battle's over, you replenish all of your health. But... At the same time, if they take casualties, sometimes it takes a long time before you even get a single entity back. Um, so, I think it's a good unit. I think it belongs at tier 3. So, I'm going to put it at B, B tier there. Because I think it's a good unit, but... It, yeah, if it was a tier 3, it would be better, I think. Its price is fine, though. Basically, you just want to get it earlier. Because, generally speaking, like in the early stage, you're going to be fighting more infantry. And then in the later stage, you're going to be fighting more mixed army is going to be more cavalry unless you're fighting dwarfs the dwarfs are always infantry but as the green skins you should sort of overcome the dwarfs fairly early you know depending on how good you are or what your priorities are okay then we've got the snotling pump wagons so i believe this one here is the regular one this one here is the spiky roller and this one here is the flappy boys all right so this one here is a tier two unit and these ones here are both tier three okay i actually really like the regular um uh, it's not like pump wagons because being a tier 2 unit you can get it fairly early it's armor pier let me just confirm that I'm pretty sure it's armor piercing 
They recruit over here. Yeah, it's armor piercing and anti-infantry. Uh, it doesn't have particularly high melee attack, but you're using the charge bonus. And because the chariot unit's an early game chariot unit, it's really good against dwarfs. And um, if you're playing as um, Grom, they're quite viable in his army. I'm going to give this one... I'm going to give it an A tier. In the early stages of the campaign, for its tier 2, I think it does a good job. And as for these two here, because they just come a little bit later and they're part of an expensive building, uh, I'm going to put them at B tier because I just don't feel like their stats, the stat bonuses, really make much of a difference in terms of... Like, if we just have a look at some of these stats, because that's really the only difference between them in many cases. Like, the flappers, 70 speed. Uh, this one here, 60 speed. This one here, 60 speed. So, the flappers are just faster, right? And the spiky rollers, they do uh, sundering damage. That's their big advantage. 225 cost, uh, 163 cost. So, yeah, I'd say the flappers are actually... Let me have a look at their charge bonus. Yeah, okay, hang on. Let me, let me readjust that. I'm actually going to put the spiky rollers down at C tier. Because this one's got a, char a higher speed... And I... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it at A tier. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah, because speed is really useful. Because it'll help, also help you keep your momentum going to push right through a unit. So I'd say that that has more value for you, for sure. Okay. All right, that's all the melee cavalry. Now we move on to archer cavalry, which... The greenskins do not have good archer cavalry. All right, so we've got the goblin wolf rider archers. This is... Uh, <laughs> it's not good... Um, I don't think it's trash. I'd probably put it under C tier. Same sort of thing with this one here. Uh, they just don't do much damage. It's very difficult for these ones here to deliver their value uh, because they run out of ammunition and then you have to go into melee. And I think their melee stats are even worse than the uh, their melee variant. Let me just confirm that. So if we have a look at this one here, melee attack 15 and 14 compared to 22 and 20, yeah. And the problem with them is that they just don't have much ammunition, and they just don't have much damage behind them. Oh, these ones here are bloody tier 2. Oh my god, that's a tier 3 unit. Hmm. Hmm, okay, for a tier 3 unit, okay, I'm gonna drop that down, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that back down to trash. Like, by tier 3, that's just not, just not acceptable. Yeah, okay, and this one here, also trash. Like, for, a, like, a really crappy horse archer unit, that just does not deliver any damage for a tier 3 unit. Like, once, you, once you're once you hitting tier 3 and above, it just needs to be about how much damage you can dish out, especially with archer units. And they just don't have enough ammunition to do it. They're essentially, their missile stats are more or less the same. The, the big advantage here is just poison, uh, which is good, but I, I don't think it's worth a tier above it. Now, the chariot unit here, this, these are okay. Now, they've got 8 chariots as opposed to... Um, as opposed to four, so a bit of an unusual thing. So this one here, uh, it's uh, they got to they can do some damage in, in in shooting, and then they're not terrible in melee as well. So, and then being tier three, I think they're okay. So I'm gonna put the chariot archer unit at C tier, but you know, you've just got better choices than, than this unit. Okay, so that's all of their cavalry sorted. Uh, now we move on to monsters. Okay. Starting with trolls. Trolls are trash, okay? The reason trolls are trash are, is because, okay, they're a tier 2 unit. The big problem is their leadership. They just... Like... It's great that they regenerate, it's great that they do armor-piercing damage, but they are just absolute cowards because on very hard battle difficulty you immediately lose four leadership so they have a leadership of 36 they just constantly rout and because they're they go into melee and then it says that they're losing in combat because the enemy cheats they lose even more leadership and then as soon as one troll routes or one unit routes it's just not really a good time for for um <laughs> for them as well and also at tier two i believe it takes two turns to recruit them uh you only reduce their time at tier three so just not a great unit to to use for standard armies however they're okay in situations like garrisons because inside of a fort you actually get a whole bunch of of uh, leadership uh, bonuses just for being inside of the walls so they actually perform really well as garrison units usually um the only other reason that you would probably get this unit is for um for siege attacker but you've just you've got better options it's just not a good unit at all uh just because they're just absolute bloody cowards uh they're just route too often 
All right, then we've got River Trolls. Now, I actually really like River Trolls. So, despite being the same kind of leadership, right? Yeah, same leadership. So, you're going to have 36 leadership. Why, why would I like this unit as opposed to the regular troll? Because we don't need to have this one actually in combat. Because it's just a stinky troll. Basically, because it has minus six uh, melee attack in an aura, you can use this to boost other units in your army. So definitely don't spam them in your army, but you know that debuff is pretty damn significant, especially against dwarfs. So I would actually put this one here as B tier. Then we've got stone trolls over here. Now, stone trolls, I didn't like them at first, but if you can just get over the fact that their leadership sucks, they've got a good amount of armor, They've got good magic resistance, really good missile resistance, which, you know, the other ones don't have. If you pair them up with River Trolls or even a River Troll Hag, Stone Trolls can be really good. Now, I would say under Wurzag's control, they're S tier. But for everybody else, I would say that Stone Trolls are actually A tier. Good unit, but you have to be careful that they don't run. Um, I would say that if you're going to go... F stone trolls like go full troll like river trolls and stone trolls just keep them all together so that they they try to keep like basically use a troll wrecking ball it can work but yeah just be careful of leadership uh because they're fucking cowards all right then we'll talk about the arachnorok spider arachnorok spider is excellent it's an s tier unit if you're gonna doomstack at all in this game the Arachnorock Spider is probably the way to go. So looking at it, it's a tier 4 unit. It's it's very expensive, which is the big reason why I don't usually Doomstack with green skins. It's like This is just way more expensive than Nasty Skulkers. You get four of them for one of these. Uh, their size definitely works against them, but these are heavy hitters. They do a decent amount of damage in, in missile attack. You can boost them by a ton. Their scrap upgrade is also really good, giving them extra melee defense. They're really good against other monsters and cavalry, and once once you're going up against Bretonia or Lizardmen or whatever, this is a really reliable unit. Um... The leadership's not particularly good, but as long as you keep it relatively supported, like 40 is sort of like the danger zone for, for leadership. Um, they usually come back and they've, they've got a good amount of health with them. So, good solid unit. I'm going to put it at S tier. Because uh, this this is like one of the only units that I would actually doomstack with this, uh, with this faction. Then we've got Giants. So Giants, where are they? They're also at tier 4. I believe they used to be tier 5. Uh, so Giants are cheaper than Arachnorok Spiders. But guess where I'm going to put Giants? <laughs> guess... Where, where do you think Giants belong? Yeah, down the bottom, you piece of crap! Because Giants are slow. Giants... Giants just don't work in Total Warhammer 2. Unless you're playing as the Beast Men, and you can recruit them for free, um, and in one turn, Giants just don't work. Because their biggest problem is that they are... Like, just huge super soakers for missile units. Any enemy that you go up against that has any kind of basic archer unit just kills giants. So it's they're really good against vampire accounts, but vampire accounts are not your primary enemies. Your primary enemies are missile factions. If you're playing as Grom, you're going up against high elves. Don't bring giants. If you're going up uh, if you're playing as any other one, you're going up against either, like, Kislev, or uh, if you're playing as Azag, or you're going up against um, dwarfs, uh, whether it be Clan Angrand or Karaza Karak. Or you're going up against the Empire, they've just got loads of missile units. They just wreck it. There's too many things that this unit here is weak against. And the fact that it's strong in melee doesn't matter because it's too weak against missiles. Where this one here isn't quite as weak. And the funny thing is, with the Arachnorok Spider, it actually has a weird hitbox where there is... Like, it's big, right? But there are arrows... It's really weird with the game. It does this with some units. Vargulf is another one that does this. There is an invisible spot where it's where it's like where it's asses, like it's thorax. I can't remember. Um, where it's asses, where the enemy archers will aim for it, but actually it'll pass right through them, so they won't actually take as much damage as you might think, because CA just hasn't sort of fixed the hitbox of it first. You'll oftentimes, if they cast fireball on it, the fireball will go right past its fucking ass, because it will just it just didn't detect it landed a hit. Now the thing is with the uh, the giant. The giant's hitbox is, like, almost too big for it. It's almost magnetically attracted to arrows. So, it's just a really shit unit. And then we've got the... Uh, the, uh, the rogue idol. Now, this one here is a bit of a weird one, because it is, like, the only tier 5 
green skin unit. It's super, super strong, but it's also stupidly expensive and stupidly slow. And for big monsters, that's almost unacceptable if you're going to doomstack with them. So I would say that this is a good unit for sure. But I don't recommend Doomstacking because the Greenskin economy can't really sustain such an expensive army. My recommendation is if you're going to do it, just get one or two because it does provide a boost to the entire army. It's an A-tier unit. For what it does, it's like really good at getting rid of melee infantry. But um, I wouldn't spam them because if you go up against anything particularly fast, like if it's just got archers or guns even, they just absolutely wreck them. So yeah, just be very careful about that. Then we've got the artilleries. Okay, so the uh, rock lobbers. Rock lobbers are okay, just a good solid cavalry unit. Uh, biggest problem with it is that it's a tier three unit, whereas its counterpart, uh, counterpart with the dwarfs is um, a tier two, the grudge throwers. So you're getting your artillery later than the dwarfs. Uh, it's primarily just used as a siege attacker. I would say that it's a B rank unit. It's not super reliable on the uh, the battlefield. Um, it's good at taking out infantry, but it's also really inaccurate. Then you've got the Doom Diver. Now, this is a really good unit, but its biggest problem is that it takes three turns to recruit and that it's a tier four unit. So you're just going to get it really late. But I would say that taken into consideration, if you can get your hand on them, that it is an S tier unit. If you build your armies around melee infantry with a lot of Doom Diver support, they can be very effective. You do need to keep an eye on them, make sure they're shooting at something effective, because sometimes, even though they've got guiding missiles, they can be quite inaccurate if not properly aimed into it like a big blob, or like a sufficiently large unit. Be, be wary of shooting into small targets, because it's not particularly accurate. And there we go with the, uh, with the green skin roster. So, their units are just all over the place. You've got melee infantry at S tier and at trash. You've got archer units in the trash and at A tier. You've got higher units above lower tier units, lower tier units above higher tier units. Um, you've got uh, slow units, big monsters down the bottom. You've got trolls down the bottom and troll units up the top. It's just all over the place. Uh, <laughs> their balancing is just wishy-washy, wacky. It's all over the place, which kind of makes sense for green skins. But based on my play, of this game, um, I would say that that's generally been the performance. These are the highest performing units, and uh, these ones here are definitely the lowest perform performing units. The ones that I would usually avoid gravitate towards these units here. Especially, my favorite unit is actually the Nasty Skulker. That's that's which is weird because it's a melee infantry unit, and I don't like melee infantry. But anyway, that's the green skin roster. Let me know what you think. If you disagree with any of these choices, post a comment in, down below and let me know because I'm more than open to changing my mind and trying out something new next time I play Greenskins because I don't feel like I've mastered the Greenskins. And the funny thing is, like this particular campaign here, we did this on a live stream a while ago. This was just one of the strongest Greenskin campaigns I've ever seen. This I did this, and this was it's on a live stream, so you can watch every minute for yourself. This is turn 90 with Grimgore, and I hate Grimgore, right? We have 186 settlements, and we did this primarily with crap stacking. Like all of our oh god, that's not a crap. Oh, that's right, I used a doom stack there. That's different. That's 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 a specific one. But yeah, I just did. Uh, the bonus versus infantry, just like loads and loads. Uh, that's a doom stack, yeah, because it's Wurzag. But we just got loads of gobbo garbage everywhere. And it just performs really, really well because you can globally recruit so many units thanks to uh, this building here. Yeah, globally recruit capacity plus one because you definitely want to want to build a lot of shamans hovels because it provides untainted and more shamans um you just spam out armies like crazy even with 11 supply lines i'm still you know i'm doing okay for money but just smashing shit uh but this is a very old campaign now anyway that's the end of this one uh screenshot that if you want appreciate you guys um don't forget to check out the link in the description if you want to actually do the tier list yourself and uh appreciate you and i'll see you next time fuckers bye